It is. Okay. Hey, everyone. How's everybody doing? It's really cool to be at Cascadia JS. Uh, the first year, so I've known Carter for a long time, and the first Cascadia JS, I helped out for a hot minute, but I never actually made it to the event. So I'm really stoked to be here today talking about a topic I'm really passionate about, which is mentoring. Just to tell you a little bit about me, I've been in the industry, yeah, I'm old. I've been in the industry a little over 20 years. I started off my career as a software developer, and then halfway in, I moved over to the product side. And I worked at some great companies doing product, Microsoft, Splunk, Cloud, did a lot of open source, really passionate about working with community. And lately, I've also been getting really involved with STEM, uh, helping uh, people of diversity. I'm also an advisor for Code Fellows, and that fits really well with the topic that I'm going to speak about today, which is mentoring. How many people here actually have a mentor? Just a few of you. Anybody here who is a mentor? Okay, well, if I come back a year from now, I'm going to try to make sure a lot more hands go up. I particularly want for people that are, I know we have a lot of folks that are the scholars that are looking to get into the tech industry. Please pay attention to this talk because I think mentoring is something that really can help you and it has really helped me in my own career. And for those of you that have been around a while, really I'm going to encourage you also to mentor others and you can give back and you can help them. And a lot of folks today are concerned about a lot of the barriers that we know that people face in the industry and mentoring is one way to help overcome those barriers. I'll talk a bit, a bit more about that uh, as we go forward. Let's start off with talking about what is a mentor. So the first thing that a mentor is, is a guide and an advisor. Now, you'll see here I have a lot of mountainous pictures. So I've gotten really into like mountaineering and rock climbing recently. So, but one of the things about mountaineering and rock climbing is you're trying to get to some type of peak. You're trying to get to some destination. And you need help to do that. And that's really when, one of the things that a mentor does. They're a guide. They've been to places that you haven't been. And they can advise you along the way. Generally, a mentor is somebody who's gone out of their way to volunteer because they want to enable others to be successful. Now, this could be somebody who works in your company and they're paid, but still, when you look at different organizations where people mentor, that's generally something that they're doing because they want to do that. And that's something you should think about as a mentee, that the person that's doing this is doing this because they want to, not because they have to. Generally, a mentor is going to have more experience than you do. They're going to be able to help you in an area where you want to grow. So let's talk about some of the ways that a mentor can help you. Many successful people, and there was an article recently in Forbes magazine about this, will tell you that mentors have been key to their success. Why? Well, one of the things that a mentor can do is provide insight. They can see things that you can't see. They can look at things at a different level that maybe you're not looking at. And they can help you to kind of navigate difficult types of situations with that insight that they provide. In particular, I found in my own career, when I had mentors that were very, very senior to me, who had been around a long time in the industry, they would be able to have that kind of insight. A lot of us are developers, so another place this can help is like if you're working on a problem and you have a mentor, they may be able to say, oh, you probably actually really want to solve it this way because this is going to have these implications. I know this because of these other types of systems that we've built in the past. A key thing that mentors can provide is a safe space. So often, and a mentor does not have to be in your company. Most of, many of my mentors do not work in the same company that I'm in. And one of the advantages of that is they can be much more objective. I can talk to them about my situation. I don't have to be able, I don't have to hold my tongue. And I can say, you know, I really have this problem that I'm going through. I don't know what to do. This person's pissing me off. I can't figure this thing out. And they can sit there objectively and, and give you some uh, advice on how to be able to deal with that situation. They can also really help you to fill gaps in your skills. 
So they can say, you know, you can go to a mentor and say, hey, I really want to learn this thing. Can you help me? And many times you will find that the answer you will get will be yes. And there's many different ways that a mentor can help. One, if it's at your job, you can possibly shadow them. So they can basically say, hey, come along, and as I go through this thing, I'll bring you with me. So you can shadow and you can learn. Um, other mentors, maybe they'll just sit down with you and they'll walk you through something. I'll give you an example. And let me just point this out. Mentoring is something you can find a mentor at any point in your career. It's not something that you have to be junior. I have many mentors, and I've been in the industry for a long time. And in my current job, where I work, uh, I, I stepped into a role where I had much more scope, and I had to do things that I never had to do before, like dealing with pricing. I never dealt with pricing before. I've written lots of code. I never dealt with pricing. So I reached out to our VP of finance in the company and said, hey, can you help? And he was able to do that. He was able to walk me through, point me out literature that would help me to get the foundation that I needed to be able to make the types of decisions I was going to have to make. Another key thing that mentors can do, and which was extremely helpful for me in my career, is they can connect you to their network. They can make lots of different connections to people that will help you in your advancement. To give you an example, um, early on when I joined Microsoft, I joined in one role as a product planner. I actually wrote a blog post about this. And I realized that that wasn't really the place that I wanted to be. But I was working with a lot of different partners in different product teams at Microsoft, and I was trying to make those connections by just doing good work and being, uh, being reliable. And that led to me basically shifting my entire career through those connections. Because one of the people that I worked with was on the product side, and he said, hey, you should consider doing this. He connected me with other program managers, and that had an amazing effect on my career. So I would really advise making those kinds of connections is really going to benefit you. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do that, from meetups to social to in your own work environment. Another thing that mentors can do is they can create opportunities. Because you're in the back of the mentor's mind and they're thinking about you, whoever the mentor is, when an opportunity comes up that they think might be a good fit for you, they can actually put your name in. And I've seen this happen several times in my own career. Like when I was at Microsoft, I had a mentor who was a partner at Microsoft. He'd been there for a very long time. So I didn't work for him. And he became my mentor because I approached him and asked him. I just said, hey, can you be my mentor? And he said, sure, I'll do that. Because somebody had advised me that having mentors was a good thing. And he actually created tons of opportunity in my career where he said, oh, yeah. He heard about something that was happening in a different organization and said, that's a good fit for Glenn. Let's, let's get Glenn to do that. So let's talk about the different types of career mentors. There actually are many different mentors. You can have life mentors. But I'm gonna, I classify career mentors into kind of three. So there's a role-focused mentor. That's somebody who really just helps you do your job. They know your job better than you, and they can help you do that. And many organizations have like a buddy system, for example, where you join uh, in a particular role, and you're junior. They're going to assign somebody to you. But a key thing I would say about mentoring is you can go after it. You don't have to wait till somebody comes to you and says, oh, we have a mentoring program, and we want to match you up. You can go out there, and you can find a mentor to fill the gaps that you've identified. Career growth focused, so a career growth focused mentor is kind of like the one that I mentioned before. Somebody who generally has a lot more experience, they may be much more senior than you, and they're looking across a much broader perspective, and they're helping you to see things from a different angle. So for example, uh, the person that I mentioned, his name was John Gossman. I remember when I was at Microsoft when there were some things that were going on within the organization that I didn't understand. And I was able to go to him and say, hey, can you explain this to me? And he would, look at, he would show it to me from a completely different perspective. And over time, I actually started to see things from that perspective. So that's how mentoring really helped me. 
it helped me to basically orientate my lens to look at things in a different way and to start to think of things in a broader perspective. You can also get a mentor that helps you just with a very specific skill. I, talked, I gave you my pricing example, where I just wanted to learn how to do pricing, and I went to somebody who really knew pricing to work with me. Let's see, I think I'm missing a slide. Uh, no, actually, no, those are all of them. Okay, so let's talk about what makes a good mentor. One key thing is that a mentor is more experienced than you. Now, many people may be thinking, well, how much experience do I have to have really to be a mentor? Really, you just have to have experience that somebody else needs. And why I'm saying that is you don't have to wait until you have 10 years of experience in the industry, for example, to be a mentor. As long as you have acquired a certain amount of knowledge that you think there are other people need, you can actually be a mentor to that, to that individual. A mentor should be somebody that you feel comfortable talking to. They're gonna help you and they're only gonna be able to help you in as much as you're able to give them the information that they need to help you be successful. What are your goals? What are your desires? What are the things that you're actually struggling with? I'm not saying they're a therapist. Let's keep it in the work kind of career context. But you should feel comfortable talking to them. I often advise people that are trying to find mentors to really look at this. If you don't feel comfortable talking to that person, you're not really going to be able, they're not really going to be able to help you and you're not really going to be able to find the help that you need. Trust. This goes hand in hand with that as well. The whole idea of a mentor is someone that you feel that you can reveal to them a whole bunch of details in order for them to be able to help you, but you're not going to do that if you feel you can't trust them. So one thing about trust really is confidentiality. That's what that means, that the things that are told to the mentor stay with the mentor, or at least that mentor gets your permission and will say that. So I mentor a lot of people and I will say, are you okay? if I say so-and-so. I'm not going to just go, go ahead and do it on my own. This has certainly been a challenge for me. They have to be a good listener. The mentor is really there to serve you. Remember that if you get a mentor. It's not that you are there to make the mentor happy. The whole idea of the mentor is to help you make that journey. If they're not a good listener, they're not going to really be understanding and, and understanding your problems, and they're not going to be giving you the space to really try to work through them. Because a mentor's job is not to solve the problem for you. That's the whole idea of advice. It's to help you see, help you look at things in a different way. Think about how to get up that trail, but you're the one who ultimately has to do it. Consistency and availability is really important. Now, there's a relationship that builds between a mentor and a mentee, and there's an agreement that happens. And whatever that agreement is, as far as availability and time, that should be something that the mentor sticks to. It's also on the mentee. It goes both ways. But if you have a mentor that's flaking out, who's not willing to give the time, then you should find another mentor who is willing to give that time, because otherwise you're just, you're just wasting your time and you're not actually making the progress. So I wanted to give a couple of pointers about how to find a mentor. So one thing you can do is many companies do have a mentoring program. And one thing I always found kooky, just telling a story, is that uh, Microsoft has a mentoring program. And they basically require, at the time, would require required that you were an employee for a year before you could get a mentor. I hope that's actually changed, because when I really needed the mentor was earliest on. So what did I do when the program wouldn't really allow me to be in it? I just went and found a mentor on my own anyway. So you don't need the program, but if there is a program, it can be a really useful resource to be able to connect with others. You can just approach a friend or a coworker. Tell your friend, your coworker, like, hey, here's something I'd really like to learn. I think you have a bunch of experience that I could benefit from. Would you be willing to be my mentor? And I have found consistently that most of the time when, or I would say consistently, when I've gone to people and said to them, hey, would you mentor me? The answer is generally a yes. 
Once in a while, it might be a no. And if they're not at a place where they're will, able to give that commitment, then no is actually a good thing. It's saving both of us a lot of heartache and hardship. A key thing I would say, too, is that people respond to honesty and when someone is genuine. So when you go to someone and ask them for a mentor, to be your mentor, be prepared to actually work. Because every mentor is going to, they're going to get discouraged as a mentor if they see that they're advising you or giving you, like they might say, a mentor might say, hey, go read this book. This book is really going to help you. Well, if you're not going to do those things that the mentor is advising on that's going to help you to learn, then that relationship is probably not going to work out very well. There's lots of online communities uh, where you can go uh, to find mentors. One that, because I come from the product side, one I'll call out is the Mind the Product Slack. So for any folks here that are interested in like product management or learning more about product, they have a great mentoring community there. And you can also use social media. So this is my uh, VP of marketing at Auth0. Uh, we call him Gonto. And he recently went, uh, went on Twitter and he posted and said, hey, you know, I'd like to talk to somebody who has experience in a company our size leading a product team. And that's because he was stepping into an acting VP of product role. So this is a good illustration of someone who is quite seasoned in their career who's going out there and asking for help. So you're never too old or too experienced to ask for a mentor. So I'm going to talk about a couple of other things quickly, which is why should you mentor? So there's, we talked a lot about the benefits of having a mentor, but what are the benefits of being a mentor? One key thing is just about do, it's doing good. You're helping other people be successful. And if you believe in the concept of pay it forward, then when you do good things, it's going to come back to you. I truly believe in that and have seen that. So you are in a place to really help other people be successful in the industry. And you can help break barriers. And this one has been really personal for me. You know, I know, for example, as a white male, that I have had a lot of advantages. And I tweeted about this a while ago. I said I've gotten double advantages, one being white, another being male in technology. And so that puts me in a place where I feel like I have a responsibility to help break, bar blah, break barriers for others. And I can do that. Why? Because I can help them introduce them to my network. I can advocate for them. I can guide them on what are the things that they need to do in order to be successful. I can help the industry as a mentor. Why? Because I'm helping to groom the next generation. I'm helping to make sure that the people that are in this industry care and are doing the right things. And are, I can inculcate in them the right principles and things to care about. Mentoring will help you be a leader. If you have aspirations of one day, for example, being a manager, then mentoring is really going to help you because you're going to get a lot of the experience. A key thing of being a manager is being able to listen and being able to advise. And you're going to get a lot of that. Plus, you're going to understand the challenges that the people that you're mentoring are going through. And all of that experience is going to lead into helping you to be a better leader and manager in the future. And this one is really, really important. And, and this is one of the reasons why, for myself, I focused a lot over the last number of years on mentoring women and people of color, is to just overcome your unconscious biases. And we all have them. It's not saying you're like a bad person. We all have these biases that we were born, you know, that we've picked up through our culture. And we act based on those biases. But if you become conscious of them, you can, you can attack them. You can battle them. And for me, um, talking to people that are in a very challenged position and hearing their challenges and understanding them and understanding the things that I shouldn't do or should do to help them has been super valuable. It's made me a better person. So. I'm getting close to the end, but I have a special treat coming up. But I would advise you all to go get a mentor and be a mentor, and you can have multiple mentors. So now, for the last part of my talk, I've got somebody really special that I want to bring up. 
I've talked a lot about how, as a mentor, you have this opportunity to help other people. And so I'm going to bring up my friend Taylor, who has an amazing story of how she went from not working in the tech industry to getting a developer job in just about a year. It's a great story. Come on up, Taylor. Can you guys hear me? Okay. How are you guys? <laughs> um, I'm really excited to be here. It's my first tech conference. Um, and so I wanted to kind of quickly share with you my story and how I landed a front end role in Seattle. Um, so if you look to the left, you'll see me um, January 29th of this year working at Boston Market as a fast food server slash cashier. And then to the right, you see me on my first day as a professional software engineer. So um, going back, uh, last year was when I started learning how to code. I couldn't afford to go to a boot camp or um, go back to college for a computer science degree. And I didn't really have much of a support system because I don't have a college degree at all. And I didn't know anyone that was in STEM. And so how I even came across coding was because I watched a documentary about Aaron Swartz, if you guys have heard of him. Um, he was the co-founder of Reddit, and he really uh, strived to use technology to impact politics, and that was what I was really passionate about doing. So I learned how to code online through Udemy.com, YouTube tutorials, um, Egghead, and I built a lot of projects, and I tweeted my progress every day on Twitter <laughs> um, using the 100 Days of Code Challenge. And I use that as a way to not only document my progress and see what I've been learning like every day, but also to connect with people. I started networking online. Um, I'm an introvert. And so I, and I also cannot like afford to go to like a meetup or anything because I was in Orlando, Florida and Orlando is dead when it comes to like tech opportunities. Um, so I wasn't fortunate to be like in New York or Seattle or anything like that. But I was on Twitter and I did get a hold of a lot of people who provided like uh, support from like around the world, um, encouragement, um, constructive feedback on my projects and on my work. And it really meant a lot to me. And so because of Twitter also, um, I got a hold of an employer in Seattle. They had reached out to me. and they had offered me an interview, and that is when I landed my first role. And I also wanted to give like a little bit of advice to people who are looking for like their first job. What really made me um, stand out to that employer and actually get that job was because I did go through some technical interviews with other companies, and I remember like the question that they asked me. And so when I um, interviewed with the lead front end engineer, I asked him all those questions that I was asked. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, hey, so um, what design patterns uh, do you like? Or uh, what does clean code mean to you? I asked like those kind of questions. Um, do you do unit testing, performance testing? Um, you know, I was just, I flipped it back on him um, to actually show that like, you know, I know what I'm, you know, like I know what I'm doing and uh, that really impressed him. And so I got offered the role and I just am now in the process of wanting to like give back to people. So I'm also like mentoring online on Twitter, helping people out, providing like some kind of support system. And I hope that my story um, is impactful and that I hope that it helps people who are struggling because I remember like those like late nights, you know, coding like every night. I would like work at Boston Market for like eight to nine hours a day, like sweeping floors, mopping bathrooms and you know, dealing with like micromanagers and like it was just like all that pain and like everything that I was going through because at the time my dad had died um, when I started learning how to code. It really, really filled like my energy to learn how to code and to like land like my first like role in tech. And I know it's like one of the most like competitive industries and I know they can get hard when you're going through the interview process, but it does get better and there will be a spot for you if you just keep going and keep trying and just putting yourself out there and building projects, so um, I hope this was really good. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, everyone.